Good morning. This is uh, Brother Eric with the Justice Coalition <clears throat> with our September 26, 2021 uh, organizing and uh, education class meeting. We'll get started. <clears throat> you should see on the screen. Uh, our meeting agenda. And uh, just make sure that's sharing properly. So the uh, purpose of these meetings are to help the members of our union uh, with the tools necessary to take control of their unions and inspire humble and accountable leadership and uh, the Justice Coalition is an independent caucus organization. It does not officially represent the Amalgamated Transit Union nor Locals 241 or Local 308. One of the uh, phrases that we frequently use is revolutionary unionism. Now this uh, phrase is borrowed from the industrial workers of the world. We've modified it slightly for our purposes. And it basically means to take power from our employer and the politicians through direct action at work and to democratically control our unions. By doing so, we can dismantle the service and transactional model of business unionism, which has neutralized our power for over 50 years. Special thanks to Chicago area organizer, brother Cody Mazzarella for letting us use his Zoom account. Let's get started with the history lesson. And uh, went a little too far. The year was 2006. That was the day 7,000 teachers and staff at the Orleans Parish County School District in New Orleans, Louisiana were fired. The public schools were considered some of the worst in the country. The school district was also bankrupt. It was unable to account for $71 million in federal funds. After Hurricane Katrina, the school district lost nearly its entire tax base. The district canceled all pay and health insurance for its teachers and staff. Then the state of Louisiana seized control of most of the city's 128 schools. A majority were either closed or turned over to charter school operators. The school district, the school district fired its remaining teachers and staff it was a union busting uh, maneuver against the United Teachers of New Orleans. The union was an AFT affiliate. Organized in 1972, it was the first integrated education union in the South. Its membership overwhelmingly consisted of African-American women, and after the schools were turned over to the charters, they were replaced by inexperienced Teach for America workers. Many of these new teachers did not have any teacher certification. A class action suit lawsuit followed. In 2014, Louisiana's Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals found that teachers the teachers and staff were not given due process and had the right to be rehired as schools reopened after Katrina. The damages could amount to $1.5 billion. 10 years after Katrina, a New York Times article asked, was Hurricane Katrina the best thing that ever happened to the education system in New Orleans? As Education Secretary Arne Duncan once said, the answer has been resounding no. In the years since, the union has fought successfully to organize many of the charter schools 
in New Orleans. So uh, we had a few people jump in to the uh, meeting. Hopefully you were able to have a little time, a few minutes before you came in to read, look over the agenda, the study guide here um, regarding this, uh, his, this, this uh, moment in history in the year 2006. Does anyone have any comments uh, about what uh, we just read? What do you think about uh, what the teachers went through uh, in New Orleans and, and uh, how they went about uh, getting justice uh, or how it relates to what we experience here in Chicago as transit workers. Any thoughts? Go ahead, anybody. Just make sure you unmute yourself. So, uh, if you have any thoughts or anything, go ahead and uh, uh, interject. I will share something quick. And that is, <clears throat> I, I would recommend that everyone do a little search on the internet for a phrase called disaster capitalism. Uh, disaster capitalism. And that is uh, when there's a disaster, the uh, bloodsuckers and vultures uh, see great opportunity to make profits. <clears throat> and uh, this is one of those examples. The pandemic that we are in now is, has been a, a windfall for tyranny uh, all over the world. And um, here in Chicago, the union misleadership has taken full advantage of it by locking members out of their rights to democratically direct their unions. And the various companies we work for have used it to squeeze out concessions. It's been kind of biting some of them in the rear because they're having hiring issues. All right, well, let's move on, unless anyone has anything to add to that. Uh, let's move on to... Uh, our little organizing uh, session here. And I'm gonna just pop that open here. And in the temp, uh, in the agenda, uh, this lesson is in, uh, in the agenda. So you can read it uh, later if you'd like, you can share it with others. We're going, it, bas it basically comes from this really fantastic uh, workbook here called Secrets of a Successful organizer okay make sure you get that book if you can if you can't well we've got parts of it online here so uh we're in lesson two we finished lesson one we got some more people coming in to our meeting here so we're going to jump into uh, uh what did i do sorry y'all i just got rid of my screen here Okay. And uh, let me just stretch my screen a little bit here. Sorry, y'all. Got this laptop very small. Okay, lesson two, one-on-one -on -one conversations. This is really important. Um, sorry, doing some window navigation here. Okay, there we go. Now that you learned about the bullseye model, make sure you look, at, look that up in lesson one, y'all. We have that in the uh, previous meeting agenda at chicagotransitworker.com. Now that you learned about the bullseye model, maybe you're breathing a sigh of relief that your workplace is not the most apathetic on the planet. That is, you know, you always hear people say, everyone's gotta be united. Everyone's gotta be on one accord. Everyone's gotta be together. No, <laughs> that's not how organizing works. You have some people, on board and some people not in various degrees. But how do you find out which issues your coworkers care about and which obstacles are holding them back? How do you, engage, how do you encourage more of them to move from disengaged to supportive and then to active and then to joining your core group of organizers? It's simple, you talk to them. 
Uh, let me get to the next page here. Getting to know you. In Rochester, New York, civil service worker Beth Watts learned the importance of one-on-one -on -one conversations as she decided to found a local chapter of Pride at Work, the AFL-CIO group of uh, for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender members. To kick things off, the fledgling group advertised a public forum for uh, LGBT workers, and the event was a failure. Speakers outnumbered the attendees. Watts realized that outreach would have to be would have to be more personal and that the group would have to make people feel safe. Few LGBT workers in the area were out on the job. So she began personally approaching LGBT workers from different unions to ask if they would help form a chapter. It, that worked better. We focused on creating relationships, Watts said, rather than fixating on growing membership numbers. She also quickly realized you can't expect people to support your cause if you don't support theirs. So build relationships. Pride at work members walked picket lines, made signs, worked phone banks, canvassed any union who needed help. My wife claims I drank beer with a blue collar, with blue collar union guys for two years before asking their support for same sex marriage equality, Watts said. It worked. When the legislature began discussing marriage equality in New York State, almost every union in Rochester, including the police and firefighters, actively pushed for the bill. In fact, Rochester unions were instrumental in moving the Republican-controlled Senate to vote yes. A local Republican senator who had voted against equality in the past became the first to break ranks with his party and support it. I could not have been prouder of my union sisters and brothers, Watts said, now pride at work is an integrated part of the Rochester labor community we pulled LGBT working workplace conditions concerns out of the closet by creating visibility and building relationships. Relationships. And at the union office and steward class are, are some of our speakers, some of the speakers kept talking about relationships, relationships, but they weren't talking so much about relationships with each other. They were talking about relationships with managers and politicians in order to get what we want. And frankly, that's a bunch of BS, in my opinion. <laughs> so you got to look them in the eye. And we'll get started in our discussion right here with this. Email, texting, leaflets, Facebook, and websites are great. But as Best Watts found out, they can't take the place of one-on-one -on -one conversations. Talking face-to-face -face is still the best way to get people involved and convince them to take action. It's easy to read a leaflet and toss it, but when a real person is asking you, it's harder to say no. Remember from lesson one, that you have to diagnose the obstacles to organizing. What looks like apathy might really be fear, hopelessness, confusion, or division. A flyer can't figure out what's holding people back, nor can it help them get over it. You need two way communication. You have to talk with your coworkers and, more importantly, listen to them. Where can these conversations happen? In the break room, the cafeteria, the parking lot, or even while you're working, if it's feasible on the job. But many organizers have found that a more relaxed and honest conversation is possible when you're both off the clock and not someplace where the walls have ears. And if you have a chance to grab a coffee or a beer with your coworkers or join their carpool, take it. You'll find out things you never knew. All right, so let's talk about this. What do y'all think of this? Any comments? Any, anybody had this kind of experience or, or anything? Yeah, uh, we have a uh, brother Jason. Uh, in introduce yourself, brother. You from uh, up north. Yeah, greetings from Ontario, Canada, uh, ATU 113. 
uh, I'm also a member of uh, Fight Back, the International Marxist Tendency. Um, yeah, uh, this is my first time in this uh, meeting, Eric. Uh, thank you for the continued invites, but scheduling problems previously were, were preventing me from joining, but here I am. Um, yeah, um, I'll just echo what, what you're saying. I mean, listen, uh, when you're talking to uh, your, your members, you're, you're out there uh, on the job site, on the, in the workplace, um, the best thing to do is listen. You have to listen. And when you have opposition to whatever your, 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 your perspective is or your, uh, your initiative that you're pushing, always remember patient explanation because that individual that wants to get into a heated debate or an argument with you, you're looking at that person. There could be three, four, maybe 10 other people, workers that are around that are listening. So you have to watch how you conduct yourself. If you're going to be, if you're going to be, uh, have animosity, um, you're going to be, you're going to get sucked into the confrontation. You're, you're, you're going to delegitimize yourself, legitimize yourself. Um, so you have to watch for that. Um, yeah, um, this is just a really great initiative. Um, very well put together, Eric. And um, yeah, and great, uh, great for everyone to attend. And that's it right for right now. <laughs> uh, Jason, it's, it's so great to have you here. And uh, yeah, you too uh, are part of a rank and file organization out there. And uh, thanks for being a part of ours. Thanks for being, for tuning in. And yeah, we always send out the reminders. Uh, they go out to a lot of people and people, you know, they got to work, they're tired, they're sick, they're busy. So uh, we just, you just, keep, we just keep putting the messages out there. And if it's convenient, people join in. And you know, I hope what we're doing inspires you up there, because uh, we're we're all in the same struggle. We're all in the same struggle. Anybody else had any comments about this? Any experiences uh, that you'd like to share? Uh, we have brother Eric Struck, uh, one of our co-organizers and the publisher of our newsletter. Finally got the news uh let's unmute there he is hey brother thanks for having me on appreciate it uh let me just take two seconds to uh tell people what the the uh the title of the uh, newsletter is actually from finally got the news is a documentary about a group called the league of revolutionary black workers from detroit uh the lrbw started as uh sort of an insurgent union movement in different automotive plants around detroit and in the detroit suburbs one of the first ones to be organized was called DRUM, which stood for Dodge Revolutionary Union Movement. And, um, you know, when, when I when I sort of appropriated that title, man, I thought that they were that that was really like a good model for us because it was uh, it was a rebellion of black workers uh, within, you know, racist companies like Ford, like Ford. Henry Ford was actually a, a Nazi who was literally friends with Hitler. You know what I mean? And then. Uh, a lot of the leadership of the UAW was very racist too. You know what I mean? So they didn't represent the interests of black workers. So I felt like that title, you know, people could uh, people could relate, you know what I mean? So, but uh, brother Eric, what you were saying about uh, this method of actually, you know, going out and, 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 and finding people's like actual concerns, man, this reminds me a lot also of, uh, of the method that uh, the Communist Party of China used when they were when it was in its infancy, man, um, it's called the mass line. It's that uh, before you before you think that you can come up with uh, a program that workers are going to relate to, man, you got to hear what they think first. You can't go in there thinking that you you have that you're like this font of knowledge and everything that people should just agree with you. You gotta you gotta. Um, get people's concerns and sort of concentrate them and then come back to to the people and be like did i get this right you know and that's uh that's a uh a method that the uh chinese communists used to to great effect in the revolution you know and so i'm with this group called freedom world socialist organization so we try to use the mass line and uh one of the things that we uh mostly you know, I mean, obviously I'm in ATU, or at least I will be for the next few days until I get fired. But um, 
it, it, most of our work is in uh, is in UPS, you know, in the in the Teamsters, you know. And uh, one of the things that we found helpful is we use this model called the militant minority. You know what I mean? So um, I tried to put that into practice over here because, like, when I got to when I got to CTA when I first joined ATU in 241, man, I didn't know what was going on in that union at all. So like the first year or two that I was here, I just kept my mouth shut and listened. You know, I just, cause, because you can't just jump in and immediately hit the ground running. You know what I mean? You got to figure out who's on whose side, who represents what, you know what I mean? So I just like kept my mouth shut and, and just listened to the people around me. You know what I mean? And then, and then from gaining knowledge that way, you can have conversations with, uh, with your fellow sisters and brothers in your local and, uh, and see what people's concerns are. Um, another thing that we took from, uh, from the mass line is that Mao says, um, unite the advanced, uh, win over the intermediate and isolate the backwards. What that means is people around you that are, that are mad about their working conditions and want to do something and have ideas on how to get things done. Those people are the advanced. People who are in this meeting right now, we're the advanced. That doesn't mean that we're something special. That doesn't mean that we're better than other people. It just means that we're the ones who are willing to stand up and do something. Now, the biggest group is the intermediate. The intermediate is people that might be demoralized by the, the crap situation in our union and in our, in our workplace, you know, but they're, they're willing to listen to you. You know what I mean? But you have to make a good case for them for them to be on board. And they got to see that there is some existing organization because they're not going to just jump in, uh, you know, if they have everything to lose, you know what I mean? And then the backwards are the people at work that really do side with the company. You know what I mean? Who, who, who are just in it for themselves. They'll throw you under the bus, you know, if they have a chance, you know what I mean? Those are the backwards and you really can't really work with those people. So the best thing that you can do is sort of isolate them from the people that do want to get positive things done, you know? So I think we're on the right track, absolutely. Yes, and, and so the three, the three, uh, and it's, it's very funny because the bullseye of organizing is, uh, is, it, is, is probably very much related to that. You know, all of the uh, organizing uh, throughout history uh, from the, uh, you know, even though there were racist tendencies and Knights of Labor and uh, 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 Debs, uh, there, there's the, international workers of the world full of Marxists and um, uh, communists and uh, anarchists, all kinds of things, you know, that Emma Goldman, that, that era of history, we, we can't uh, disregard the roots, the communist Marxist anarchist roots of, of unionism and industrial unionism that, that is the foundation of uh, rebellion against those who are in power. And uh, we have to always remember that history and to embrace it. Not that you have to accept and say, I'm a socialist or I'm a communist or I'm a Marxist or I'm a capitalist, whatever, but you, you can't deny, you can't deny the facts. You can't deny history. Um, so can you break, uh, Eric, can you just give me that three real quick, unite the advanced, Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, unite the advanced, win over the intermediate, and isolate the backwards. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. W wonderful. And let's. Um. We we. Uh. Oh, just lost uh, some people here. But hang on. I'm gonna get you, Jason. Keep it there. Um. I wanted to let everybody know. Uh, by the way, this is recorded. This is recorded. I think you all know that Eric struck. You heard. Uh, that this is recorded, right? Um, maybe you stepped away, but um, this is being recorded. So anytime you want to say something that you don't want recorded, just let me know and I'll pause it. Um, but but brother Eric, uh, like he said, he's going to be uh, uh, administratively separated at work, and uh, uh, this is a sham. Uh, it, it's uh, part of a uh, conspiracy between our local two, ATU local 241 president, Keith Hill, 
and uh, some of the managers that don't like Eric Strzok for his militancy. He's got a very safe work record, but he had a, uh, uh, a work-related injury. It made it uh, very uh, painful to, uh, to uh, operate the bus. So uh, he was off for some, while, for, for some time and now they're firing him. So on September 29th, this Wednesday, uh, at Chicago Avenue Garage at Pulaski and Erie, we're going to protest in support of Brother Eric and all those co-workers in bus and rail who have been unfairly and unjustifiably fired uh, uh, at the CTA and Pace bus. Uh, Brother Jason, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Um, and yeah, um, again, I'll just uh, echo what uh, uh, Brother Eric Stark was uh, saying um, about the uh, uh, Revolution Union, uh, uh, Union of Black Members. Uh, it's that's that is a phenomenal um, movement that happened. Uh, General Baker, um, just a, a real labor militant. Um, also, um, uh, Coleman Young, uh, the former mayor of Detroit, he was involved in that, and he actually took a, a metal pipe to uh, one of uh, Henry Ford's um, heavies. Um, <laughs> which is uh he he was he was an amazing man i lived in i went to school in windsor um and it was just before he passed in 97 which most most of it was uh overshadowed by the death of diana but um it was um the lineups in detroit were like around the block for him uh, even longer um but yeah um going back to henry ford as well i mean we i think we all can agree that 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 history is important and it definitely plays a role um, in the, um, uh, the international Marxist tendency, which the, is the organization I, I, I fall under. Um, we we have we, we have to look at um, a few quotes that 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 prove that that Henry Ford and and the capitalists as as a whole they'd like to dismiss history. Um, Henry Ford was quoted as saying that history is bunk. It's just one bloody thing after another. Kind of, kind of dismisses history, um, and they they continue to do that. They 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 do that because it it helps dismiss movements, um, and and that's another thing that we should that we should examine. Um, like uh, Lenin had said, um, Vladimir Lenin um, had said, um, uh, without revolutionary theory. There can be no revolutionary movement. So the theory in playing out the practical work is pivotal. It's important, and you need a theory. And things like um, small uh, small fights that we're fighting um, for the uh, uh, for LGBTQ, um, for uh, racial rights, um, for pay equity. Um, gen gender uh, uh, pay equities. Um, these are all really, really important fights. But I think we also need to put it under the umbrella of class struggle. This helps us have a, a broad fight for for uh, for all the in, 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 in encapsulates all of these all of these. Um, all of these small fights. So um, we have to find a way to, 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 to use this strategy of class struggle, class independence, right? Where we're not dependent on, on the, the ruling class, on the bourgeoisie, I don't think anyone says that anymore, but um, that we're not dependent on them. We need class independence, right? You're the working class, nothing happens, without our permission. Not a wheel turns, not a light bulb shines. Um, that was a quote from one of our, our founders um, without the express um, consent of the working class. So these, uh, these are definitely some strategies that I can look at in my, in my grassroots and maybe you guys as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh... Eric, did you did you have uh, anything you wanted to add? 
Uh, actually, uh, 90% of that sounded great. And I'm in, I'm in substantial agreement. The only one thing that I would disagree with is I think that, uh, that, uh, you know, um, this is the, the, the U S is, is, is like the, the center of the world imperialist system, right? So the, the U S there's, there's an oppressor nation and, you know, oppressed nations, whole nations oppressed within the borders of the U S you know, like internal colonies, like the black nation for one in the U S Southeast Azatlan, uh, which is, you know, the Chicano nation in the U S Southwest. And then, you know, it's uh, uh, indigenous nations and, uh, you know, Puerto Rico and Hawaii and stuff, you know what I mean? And these are, that's, that is not something that can be subsumed under class. You know what I mean? The, the, the struggle of, uh, you know, black people as a nation for national self-determination and independence and the struggle of the Chicano people and, um, you know, indigenous people, uh, Hawaiians and Puerto Ricans is revolutionary in its own its own rights. It's a multi-class movement, you know what I mean? Which has which is part of you know the workers' revolution, right? But it, it also it's since it's a whole nation oppressed, you know, all black people suffer national oppression, not just workers. You know what I mean? So I think that that's uh, that's the the right way to look at that, and I think that history in it has uh, has uh, borne that out, and that was actually the way that. Uh, League of Revolutionary Black Workers looked at things, you know what I mean? So, um, I mean, other than that, yeah, I, I agree with uh, with this brother's assessment that, uh, you know, we got to stay independent politically. I think that's a real important point, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, other, other than that one point, I think we're really pretty much on the same page. Thank you. Um, and and I'd like to add to historically, and, and I'm sure this had a uh, effect on drum because it's Detroit. Now Detroit is the uh, is also known in the Nation of Islam as uh, the home of Temple Number One, and that is where uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, uh, met uh, the uh, uh, Master Farab Muhammad, his teacher, and and then he was taught about the Black Nation. He was taught about the Chicano or the so-called Red Nation um the 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 native peoples and and was it was made clear that you are a nation you are not you know just uh an african american <laughs> a negro you know you are black you are you are an independent nation and that is what came about uh regarding the nation of islam which had uh well we don't we don't even need to get into that now but the effect of the Nation of Islam on uh, revolutionary uh, thought and history uh, is, is infinitesimally, <laughs> you just can't quantify it. But um, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, both of you. Any other, anybody else wanted to add anything to that? And then we'll just jump into the rest of the agenda. Okay, all right. So again, we're recording this session. So uh, if there's anything you wanted to add in, just say, hey, pause. If, if you don't want it to be recorded and, and, and made public, just uh, say something, okay. Uh, let's go to the agenda. What's your agenda? They always like to say that to me. What's your agenda, brother Eric, boogeyman? Tell them my agenda is free donuts on Friday. Okay, we have uh, some introductions I wanna do. Uh, okay, so let's, let's be real brief. We got some people here. Let's introduce ourselves. I'm, a, I'm Brother Eric, I'm a rail car repairer out of Howard Shop uh, and a co-organizer co here at the Justice Coalition. Pretty much everyone here is part of, uh, is a co-organizer. Co <laughs> Uh, let's go to, uh, brother Tom, can you introduce yourself? He might be driving. So we got, we got brother Tom on the line. He's a, he's a bus operator out of Forest Glen, real tr troublemaker with a lot of history. <laughs> and then we have, uh, we have iPhone. I think that's Kathy. 
<laughs> yeah, that's me. Uh, retired switchman. I've been retired three years. Yeah, and Kathy, you, I thank you so much for all that you do for us uh, in in uh, workers at the CTA. And you know, you're you're the only retiree that 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 fight keeps fighting. Everyone else is like, "Well, I'm retired. I got mine. I'm I'm out of here." And they don't they don't realize that that pension is 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 in the in the target, you know. And they think they got theirs, but it's not guaranteed. That's right. And thank you guys for uh, fighting and and encouraging people to uh, fight back. Thanks again for being part of it. Uh, I will. You, let's get to uh, so so, brother Eric. Uh, you already kind of introduced yourself, um, but if you wanted to reintroduce yourself on another level, uh, sure. Yeah. Um... Uh, Eric Strug, badge five five seven two six, Chicago Garage, um, and uh, yeah, I'm a member of uh, Freedom World Socialist Organization, a Marxist Leninist uh, group, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's, it man, it's so great to work with uh, all of y'all. And then uh, Jason Watts, you introduced yourself, uh, but we don't know you're you're a you're a bus operator, right? Out of yeah, Ontario. Uh, yeah, I'm a bus operator, uh, ATU 113, uh, Toronto, Ontario, uh, with the TTC, Toronto Transit Commission. Um, and yeah, I'm a, I'm a member of Fight Back, the International Marxist Tendency, Canadian section of, of the International Marxist Tendency. And um, as Eric mentioned earlier, uh, also uh, uh, I have my own little coalition, although it's on pause because of some, some infighting um but uh yeah we call ourselves a um, um grassroots uh grassroots workers movement hey i should have added i'm sorry for interrupting that mm -hmm. i'm a member of the progressive labor party for a long time so yeah and i'm looking for a quote about um black capitalists i think fred hampton said it but i can't find it so anyway I just yeah. wanted to yeah we have we have a lot of that <laughs> um so uh there's some some things that came up uh with some of our co-workers um and uh they're they're very we have a lot of co-workers that want to start organizing want to start protesting okay um so i was hoping to get some more information from uh, some of them so I could present it to, to you all for everyone. But uh, uh, there's stuff happening. Uh, there's stuff building. There's there's um, possibly something coming up at, at the Fullerton station. Um, uh, and we'll see what uh, that's on the, uh, you know, the red, purple, uh, brown main line. And, um, we have on September 26th, uh, I still have to do the flyer. Uh, Eric sent me some uh, stuff that I can put on it. And uh, I, I hope to do that today. Uh, and that is on September 26th, 26, 29, right, Eric? <laughs> Let me get that from uh, Wednesday, 29, right, Eric? Yes, sir. Yes, that is correct. Um, at 11, uh, we, we're gonna, we're asking all people spread the word. Anybody who's been unjustly fired, we're gonna show up and show support for each other. Brother Eric is being uh, uh, terminated, so fired on that day uh, for some crap. And, um, and, and we're just gonna speak up. We're gonna try to support our brother. We're gonna support others, anybody. Cause we know Keith Hill and local 241, that man, uh, is is really cruel and insecure, and he works with uh, managers to get people fired, even even board members. Um, it's just awful. It's just awful. We have to take a stand. This is unacceptable that a union president helps get people fired, written up, etc. On uh, October fifth, at uh, at eleven, 
Uh, we're going to be at the local 241 union office. It's called Take Back Our Union Tuesday. Take Back Our Union Tuesday. And I'm going to, I'm going to jump up to the, uh, the link for you to show you. Um, it's, in, it's in Facebook here. Um, but it's a public uh, event. It's a public event. We have a little flyer here. And basically what we're, we're see, it, it has happened again. Uh, local 241, the largest local here uh, with the most employees at the CTA Pace Bus has canceled membership meetings um, because of, uh, as per recommendation by the international, but he's, he hasn't provided, he hasn't provided the uh, documentation of this. And then uh, at the last local 308 meeting, our uh, president, Eric Dixon, said he might be canceling uh, uh, our membership meetings at local 308 as per recommendation of the international. So what recommendation is that? You know, what recommendation? And, and usually what it is, it's referring to a letter where international president John Costa said, uh, it's up to the boards of the locals to decide if they want to hold meetings. Um, and, and so, you know, we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll see what all that's about, but we're going to speak up about this. This is wrong. We don't need our meetings taken away from us. We need to have virtual meetings. Those are the safest, right? You know, we need to have, uh, our rights to democratically direct our union. I'm sorry, this is taking forever to load this thing. Let's go to Jason. Go ahead, Jason, brother Jason. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Um, yeah, I mean, this. Uh, I I think you guys are having a spike in COVID um, across the country. Is that the reason for this, Eric? Or well, yeah. that's the that would be the the logical reason. But the but but you know, yeah. And he did mention that, but there's enough room to space people out. You could do it outside. You know what I mean? There's, 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 you could do it yeah. online. There's so many alternatives, right? Yeah. That's, that's what I was getting to is that the, it, it, it's not a lack of options. It's a lack of imagination. Right. And um, this, this is uh, in a consistent theme. Uh, I, I pretty much, I think across the, across ATU um, it's been a consistent theme in, in my local as well. Um, just lack of motivation, lack of, uh, imagination, um, and, um, yeah, um, alternatives should be put in place, like what you're suggesting, like Zoom, um, smaller meetings where you can, um, social distance. Um, I mean, let's, I mean, it, it's about the workers, right? The workers, the workers know how to keep the workers safe, right? The workers yeah. will never allow each other to be put into a, a precarious uh, situation. Um, but, um, the union bureaucracy, um, they, they, they told the line of the, of, of, of the, actually the, uh, the capitalists and the, uh, the, uh, the bosses were, were, we are, we are a lie. The workers are a possible liability. That's the line that they're towing. And that, that has to stop. The workers need to take, take control and the workers need to come up with an alternative. Um, can you can you tell us uh, what's going on with one one three and union meetings and w were meeting canceled? Are meeting canceled? Uh, how what, how are they dealing with the uh, you know social distancing, et cetera? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we we just started having meetings, in person meetings again. Um, I believe it was the uh, or, so it was August our August meeting. Um, was our first in person, um, and uh, we recently had um, a, a meeting in person um, last last Sunday, uh, which had a pretty big attendance. Two hundred and fifty uh, members showed up to that one, where we we usually have eighty. Um, but that was there was a a vote for um, chief returning officer, so there was um, there was some some careerists and, um, that were that were motivating 
um, their 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 careerist uh, supporters to uh, show up and and get them to have a leg into a, a, a position. Um, but yeah, all before that, it's been uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, it's been online, online, and, and not even online. It was like it's just um, like these info sessions where uh, the the board would get to uh, talk about what they've done and what's going on and what's what's happening. Um, and you you can submit your questions online, which is they they love that. They just they think they're 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 just loving that because they could they could pick and choose what questions um, they're going to answer and and totally be prepared um for uh for a for a, for a beautiful answer for a well well laid out answer right no they love that um so um that's that's been how it's been uh for uh since the beginning of the pandemic um online meetings can be uh can you know they can be interactive um and they can actually control the meeting um with your with your your, your um with the amount of time that you speak if you go over the three minutes, boom, you're muted. So that's so that's an advantage of theirs as well. And they 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 don't want to do that, right? They don't want to do that work. They just want to they they want to do the, the the easy work that that bureaucrats like doing, and that's why they're bureaucrats. Yes, uh, and and we got uh, brother Tom with his hand up. Real quick, uh, we'll get you, Tom. Stay there, uh, Jason. Um, uh, our are, do all members have access to these online meetings and uh, can they uh, view recordings of them? Um, no, the, like, like I said, when it's in the online format, um, all it is is um, an info session. There's, yeah. no, there's no interaction. There's yeah. no back and forth. Um, as you to you can't vote, no motions. You don't have any motions or anything. No, like we that. haven't had motions since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's quite, it's, it's pretty scandalous, actually. So um, democracy has yeah. been been subverted. Yes, it has. Absolutely, democracy is dead in the unions. <laughs> um, uh, Tom, let me unmute you. We got we got to unmute you, Tom. There, you, there you go, Tom. You're on. Uh, good morning. Good morning, brother. Yeah, I, just, I just wanted to uh, ask him about the online meetings they're having, but he explained it. It's not like two forty one where if you're not on Keith Hill's page, you can't get in the meetings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine that, Jason. He's got. The union president, one of the largest locals in the ATU, has a private Facebook group, and uh, the people like Tom and Eric and 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 others have he doesn't he blocks them from getting in the group, and then he had that's where he holds his uh, his info sessions. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that's, scan that's scandalous. That's that's and that's the, the, utterly scandalous. The international is okay with that. Well, of course, it's a you know it's a it's the biggest bureaucracy, so they support. They're they're very tight knit community. Yeah, tight knit. All right, on our next. Ah! <laughs> uh, any other comments from anybody, and then we'll move on here. Okay. Um. So take back our Union Tuesday. Uh, just so you see again, right here is a little flyer, okay? And um, so we got, we got, we're gonna be busy, right? We got, we got Wednesday, <laughs> we got Wednesday. I haven't made a flyer for that yet. We got Wednesday at Chicago Avenue Garage for for unjust unjustly fired coworkers. Please reach out to these coworkers who've been fired or who are being suspended unjustly or punished unjust. Anything, anything you're pissed about, show up. Bring a sign about anything. We're not having any control or any censorship. Um, there is a, uh, we, we were going to have a guest, uh, a lawyer, uh, regarding the uh, Retiree Healthcare Trust. We got a little bit more time in a meeting. He might, he might uh, 
to join in. I, I, I heard he was uh, uh, under the weather actually. So uh, that may have changed. I hope he's okay. Um, and I wanted to also, okay, Eric, keep, you, keep your hand there. Um, we have the online <clears throat> steward class for labor notes. Uh, if anybody's interested, click on the link. If you can't afford it, uh, one of our organizers, Sister Nicole, will pay your bill to go to that online steward class, okay? So make sure you click on that in the agenda. We have a, a in-person meeting we're trying to work on. Um, the, uh, some of the other organizers are, are working on that, possibly sometime in October. Um, so we want to, uh, <clears throat> uh, Sister Willette, she, she's not in the meeting right now, but uh, you know, life is life, things happen. So we, we may or may not have the uh, uh, in-person meeting, but uh, please be patient. And if you want to help make that happen, uh, reach out to uh, to the Justice Coalition. Text two two four nine three five three zero seven five. And another action that we did is some of the flagmen who are or are train operator qualified. They're still part time. Uh, they're they're known as part time operators. Uh, they uh, organized a, a little flyer campaign because there was a pick. There was a pick this week for their schedules or for their days off, whatever, but they don't, a lot of them have been um, uh, <clears throat> forced to do things in the pit that are against the contract and make their work even more stressful. So uh, we made it, we helped them make a little flyer to put up at the terminals and to share online regarding the contract. And uh, some, even some union people got upset about that. Isn't that great? Love to piss them off because you share stuff with the members. They hate that. We had a local 308 State of the Union Zoom call. Uh, I was working, could not attend that. Um, we got no reports on it. Um, it was probably a bunch of BS. One of our organizers, Sister Kathy, tried to get in and they wouldn't let her in. Um, they're really nice to the paying members, aren't they? All right, Brother Eric, talk to us. Yeah, uh, it's just two things I want to bring up. First of all, um, I, I think that uh, it's too bad that lawyer couldn't make it to uh, explain the, um, the uh, retiree health care trust because the, uh, the HC trust is, uh, it's so like Byzantine and so like opaque. It's really tough to understand anything about it because basically it's a slush fund for CTA and for, um, and for certain people on the executive board, you know? And, um, you know, I have a lot of questions about it. I have a hard time explaining it to, uh, to my 241 sisters and brothers other than what I just said, you know what I'm saying? So it would be really helpful if maybe we could publish something on that. If we could do a little bit of research on it, how it started, uh, an approximation of how much we think is in it, how people have not been getting their uh, access to their funds when they retire, you know what I mean? And just basically just sort of like uh, answer some of the most frequently asked questions about it. Because that's one of the first things that you get like when people, if people think you know a little bit about the union, that's going to be like the first thing out of their mouth, man. And, and it's a and it's a huge scan that they're perpetrating on us, you know. And yeah. then, uh, secondly, secondly, before I did, man, I just wanted to say that this demonstration on Wednesday is not really. I mean, I'm glad people are showing up to support me, but it's not really about me. There's um, a big problem in 241 and 308 is that uh, that we have to that we have never confronted this uh, CTA uh, uh, policy of accelerated discipline. So you could have like a good record and then have like a bad week, you know, and accumulate a couple of things on your record and be out the door before you know what's going on. You know what I mean? And it makes everybody's job really precarious, you know, and it stresses out a lot of people out there on the streets because it's like, you don't know what they're gonna put on you, 
like if you're if you're a bus operator you got to worry about uh you know um you can't get into an accident but sometimes to not get into an accident you got to slam those brakes on you know and then you have to worry about a uh, fall on board so cta structures these things so that if they don't get you for one thing they're going to get you for another you know what i mean so it's like uh, this demonstration should really be a lot about getting rid of accelerated discipline because uh, most of the people that get canned, well, I think most of the, uh, most of the uh, discharges is usually about attendance, but I, I, would, I would venture to guess that the second most common thing to get discharged over is, uh, is at acceler accelerated discipline BS, you know what I mean? So. Those, those last chance agreements, all that stuff, it's just despicable. And, and it's baked into the contract. I'm going to bring that up uh, on the screen in a moment. Uh, Brother Jason, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Brother Eric. Um, uh, yeah, like uh, Brother uh, Eric Stark was saying, uh, these, the, they intentionally make these documents, um, uh, well, they're, they're ambiguous in their nature. Um, but they, they love the ambiguity um, that the workers don't understand the language um, or how it's put together. And, and I'm sure even uh, they, they don't understand it themselves because um, this has been going on for a long time. But, wait, but wait, what a strategy that you can use to understand it is, um, is approach it from a scientific um, um, perspective, dissect it. We all went to, you know, in, 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 in school where you dissect the, dissected a frog or, or, or whatever else. Look at, it from, look at it from the same approach. Don't look at the whole thing. Look at the small parts and try to put it together like a, like, like, like a puzzle in that manner, where it's, where it's, where it's in, in, in a sequence, right? Um, and uh, maybe a, a large group of you could agree to take a certain section and, and, and dissect it and go by page by page, paragraph by paragraph, page by page, and try and, try and figure it out. Um, once you take that approach, I think, uh, I think you'll, you'll, you'll definitely have some gains. Yes, yes, I like it, I like it. And that's for, that's for all of us, you know, at any time with anything is, is just, just start, start one little bite at a time. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, uh, my computer's a little slow, but I wanted to bring up this thing in the contract. It's Article Two Point Six. It's just hideous. Um, I should have just brought it up in the workers' contract, but you know that's what I'm going to do. Let me just go right here. It'll be a little faster. So the workers contract, by the way, this is unofficial document. This is a justice coalition project. We basically have uh, rewritten the contract and it's unofficial. It's not recognized by the uh, CTA or the ATU, but we don't care because we're telling members vote no on the contract this year, whenever they give it to us and tell them that uh, we need to make our own contract and we have to have open bargaining. And that means the members have to be involved in all negotiations. No more secret meetings with the lawyers. So article 2.6, here it is. So we have it stricken through because it sucks. We have to get rid of it. And here's what we're talking about, this accelerated discipline, punishment. The authority shall be at liberty at all times during the existence of this agreement and subject to provisions hereof to operate its property according to its best judgment in the orders of competent authority. Okay. Local 241 and Local 308 agree that neither will in any way interfere with or limit the right of the authority to discharge or discipline its employees covered by this agreement where sufficient cause can be shown except for membership in Local 241 and Local 308. Not okay. You see what I'm talking about, Brother Jason? <laughs> it we we have the same language in our in our bylaws it's a uh, um management has a right to manage it's, it's vulgar it's future i hate it yeah so so we we have to fight to get rid of it and that's the only alternative you know 
And, and people like to say, well, this shows that you can't tell the company what to do. I say, well, if you read it, it says you can't tell the company how to punish the workers. You know, um, but anyways, if you can't tell the company what to do, and that's your response to anything that to injustice, then you don't need a union, right? You don't you stop. We're, we should stop paying your salary. <laughs> if you're going to tell us that and you're a union president, right? <laughs> what the hell are you? You know, slavery was legal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, well, we can't fight it, you know, slavery. Hmm. <laughs> no, we need to fight that. It's wrong. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? I'll, I'll move on. I see a hand. Eric, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to agree with you guys. It's 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 absurd, dude, because like, uh, I mean, let's hit the rewind button to back to like, you know, like the... Uh, the 30s and 40s, it's like there was not only would the unions tell uh, the company how to do their uh, how to how to run their company, they were the ones in charge of the hiring. There was hiring halls in you know Longshore and Auto and Steel. So it's like not only can we tell you how to run your company, we're going to tell you who to hire. So it's not outrageous, and it and, and it and it does have a basis in history. And that's just that's like. Uh, that's part of labor's long retreat to let language like that creep in there. And you're right. I mean, that's, that's the essence of, of industrial unionism is that, no, we're getting a say in this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the longshoremen are like one of the, some of the few unions left that have some type of hiring hall, you know, that legacy. And, and they're, they, I, I, the longshoremen are being absolutely assaulted. I mean, they, they got multi-million dollar lawsuits against them, but they're hanging on. <laughs> but, you know, they, they refused to uh, unload uh, Israeli ships too. So they're still very political, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They're like, you gonna mess with this and mess with that, with these people over there and over there. All right, fine. We're not going to unload these cargo containers. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, the longshoremen, I mean, they, they've, they, they've turned into a real militant union. Um, I think it's the effect of, I, th I think, the younger generation coming up. Um, but uh, one story really just sends shivers down my spine. Is, um, it's so inspiring. Uh, during the, the Los Angeles uh, teacher strike, um, that was in 2017, um, the... Uh, the teachers went on strike. The, uh, the charter schools, uh, went on strike as well. Um, the, there was one charter school in particular, uh, Harry Bridges, which Harry Bridges was the, uh, was, was the, the you know, the one of the, part of the big strike in, in San Francisco. And he was part, he was the head of the, uh, uh, longshoremen's union. Um, they, they went, the, 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 the longshoremen's union went to that charter school named after their founder, and marched in solidarity with those teachers. Amazing, amazing uh, uh, example of, of, of uh, 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 cross uh, solidarity movement um, and the, the historical, again, the historical aspects um, were just, uh, were, were there as well. Um, but uh, just, just amazing, they, they helped, uh, they marched with, picketed with the teachers, they um, organized food drives, um, it, Quite an amazing story. Thank you. And you know, here's something really weird: is that in Chicago, especially in in the rail side, local three zero eight, uh, we have uh, our secretary. She loves to uh, go march with other strikers and uh, you know uh, of other unions uh, and who are picketing and show. Yeah, we support you. We support you. But then. Uh, <clears throat> When the Justice Coalition or anybody wants to, who's a member, want to organize a protest, she, her response is always, no, I won't help you. I won't support you. We won't support you. It's not sanctioned by the official union officers and blah, 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 you know? And, and the sad thing is what she's done is she's made so many of us even hate other unions wanting this solidarity, you know, to, to march with and support. 
So we are so abused here in Chicago by our leadership, our misleadership, um, that we can't really enjoy the benefits of solidarity, protests and solidarity, actions and solidarity, because uh, they mistreat us. And then they go around to these other unions acting like, yeah, we're all militant, man. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up? You know, and, and then we're looking like, what are you doing with them? You don't even march with us and our part-timers who are living in poverty, you know? <laughs> okay, uh, we're, just, we're just about done. I see uh, we had some people trying to get in and, and maybe they're having problems. Uh, maybe there's some kind of technical thing going on here. Uh, people, people come in, I admit them, and then they disappear. Uh, and these are people who are regulars. So if, if you're having problems, I'm really sorry. Uh, keep trying, uh, please. And then we have a recording here too. All right. Um, so just a little update. Um, the workers contract is just about done. Uh, we still have, I still got things I got to enter in. That people have uh, been, been, been plugging in, saying that we need change in the contract. So the language has been improved somewhat, um, uh, but uh, definitely take a look. Whatever you can do to participate and help, be a, be a look over it, look for issues, put your comments in there. Let's uh, fix it. We got the contract update files. What's what's the update? Okay, everyone's asking me what's going on. So um, this week I called I called President Dixon. I got sent direct to voicemail. I texted him. Uh, I, I, I called him, left a message. I texted him and said, uh, yeah, coworkers are asking me about the contract. Can you give me something? Uh, I did this before too. And, you know, he kind of told me, you know, uh, you know, he, 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 he just started, you know, in January and there, the other administration wasn't doing nothing. That's okay. But we need to know, we need some updates. So, uh, uh, I don't know if President Dixon is ignoring me. He probably is, but uh, I encourage members to call him as well. Um, but I will always uh, try to get information for you. Uh, we have a contract petition. We need to have co the contract, whether it's the expired one or the new one posted at all the offices, all the terminals, all the shops where we work, all the garages. We have an hour of power poll. So the next hour of power protest, we're gonna have to start organizing for it soon. We're gonna close this poll real soon. It uh, doesn't look like I'm gonna get a pick in my department. So the bus people and the, the bus transportation and rail transportation people just had their pick. So we're probably gonna just make this thing happen. Uh, 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 it's probably gonna have to be on a weekend. Um, so I just got a message that, uh, they need the Zoom information. Okay. Um, excuse me. Any comments, any questions? Anyone have anything on their mind they'd like to share? Please unmute yourself and speaketh clearly. Um, okay. So any, anything happening in our workplaces? Any issues you want to vent about? Um, No, okay. And I think that's about it. So again, we're gonna have our, our little protests on the 29th of Wednesday. Uh, I still need to make a flyer for it. We'd, we'd love to uh, have as many people as possible participate. Thanks again for those of you uh, that were in today's meeting, those of you who are watching the, will be watching the recording, make sure you register. Um, I have a link that way you can always get reminders for each meeting and, and the, the, the link to view it at a later time. And I think that's about it. Any, any last chance, anybody want to say anything? Okay. That's, uh, I see, I see like, uh, go I'll ahead. Say, I'm sorry, I'll say one thing. Please um, do. And, and maybe I'll see some of you downtown. I'm going to the rally at Federal Plaza in support of the Haitian uh, migrant workers. Um, I think that's, it starts at 
And I'm going to take the train. So that's a big step for me of my fear of COVID. I'm going to take the train. Hey, well, you know, you know, if you wear your mask, you'll be allowed on the train. How's that? Yeah. Okay. I knew that. Thanks, Bo. Good for you. Use that free uh, pensioners pass. Right. <laughs> now we have a uh, sister Jan. Um, she was she got in here and then she disappeared and she just sent me a message that she needs the information to get in so looks like she's having some problems getting in here i hate to close it right as she gets in so i just sent her the link so tell us about why you think this protest kathy uh is something that we should participate in kathy sister kathy can you unmute yourself please Oh, yes, sorry. Um, I said there's a lot of reasons why people should participate in it. It'll help to build the anti-racist movement in this country and around the world and, and, and the fight against imperialism and to show also how capitalism is in steep decay and, and heading more toward fascism um, you know, every month, every week. There's so many migrants around the world and it's all, almost all people of color and they're being treated worse than dogs. And while it's true that the working class has to fight for the working class and will, but, but people do, not always step up and fight to protect each other because of because of all the bullshit we've been taught so anyway yeah and 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 what we're one thing regarding the haitians is uh uh there were these these very graphic photos of uh, uh people on horses it, it resembled the uh, uh slave catchers uh of the uh, 17th and 18th uh, century centuries, uh, right? It just, it was shocking, right? That this, uh, we got someone waving their hand, but um, that's what one thing that really set people off is my God, what is going on here? And then we got thousands of children in cages <laughs> by the porter, you know? Um, so go ahead and unmute yourself uh, if you want to speak about this. Thank you, Eric. Um, yeah, like I'll I'll echo what uh, what Sister Kathy was saying. Um, it's uh, you know, like Lenin had said, it's uh, fascism is uh, the result of capitalism and decay, and uh, that's what's that's what's hap that's been happening. Um, Pretty well since 2008, the, uh, the financial crisis in 2008. Um, but uh, yeah, um, trying to organize my thoughts here. Um, yeah, I mean, we have to stand against this, and and it and it, and it falls in the lap of, of organized labor. Organized labor needs to take the initiative uh, in 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 what's happening at the border. Um, what's happening um, with uh, ex exploited workers? Um, it's just it's it's just ridiculous that they're not. Um, even uh, up here with uh, with COVID, um, we have a lot of um, anti-vax, uh, anti-mask, um, science deniers um, that are protesting in in front of hospitals. They're they're yelling obscenities at at doctors and nurses and and people going in there for for cancer treatments. Ridiculous. Where's organized labor? Organized labor should be at the forefront. We shouldn't have the shouldn't have the cops, uh, 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 the, 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 the functionaries of the of, of the state um, protecting workers it should be the workers that are protecting the workers it should be the unions. It should be, they should be encircling the hospitals. Um, now, regarding the the I want to be real careful. Uh, I want to distinguish some things because I have some issues regarding that vaccine mandate and the mask people and all that stuff. Now the mask is clear, and 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 
it does prevent the spread of any kind of infectious disease um, if properly used. Um, but, you know, there's some issues, you know, you don't just keep wearing the same thing. You got to sanitize, you got to wash, you shouldn't touch it, all these little things. Otherwise, you complicate things. But uh, frankly, um, I, I got my vaccinate. I got a vaccination, but I did so with, with great hesitation. And a lot of my coworkers, uh, many are, are, are non-white, and they, we still have fresh in our memory. And it still happens to this day, where we are actually experimented on. People with uh, uh, dark skin, melanated peoples, are the subject of all kinds of uh, you know, medical experiments throughout history, and even even through modern history. And and it is it is uh, it is frightening uh, to many of my coworkers because not only is it a historical thing being compounded, but it is this, this whole reality that they're so abused uh, by, their, by our employer, especially the part-timers. There's no trust for anything that's quote unquote science because uh, if the employer is trying to force it and saying, we're gonna fire you if you don't take this vaccine, um, that is that is that is wrong in my opinion that is wrong uh there's other things that the union that we as a union should fight for to help uh, uh co-workers who are dealing with that maybe maybe uh on-site testing you know all these types of things there's got to be alternatives but if we i believe if we take the side of bunching our co-workers uh, uh with uh these racists uh these fascists, uh, we're making a big mistake and Democratic Socialists of America are doing that and some other organizations are doing that. And it's like, it, you're alienating yourself. <clears throat> you're actually causing, in my opinion, a, a greater divide when we take our, our, our coworkers, especially those who live in poverty and, and, and bunching them with fascists. I'm not saying you did that, Jason, um, but, um, I just wanted to put that out there. And we have uh, Sister Jan. We're just about done with the meeting, Sister Jan. I'm so glad you, you could get in. Uh, did uh, Jason, uh, did you have a response to what I was saying? Or uh, should uh, Jan go ahead? No, no, Sister Jan could go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah. And we can debate. Debate is important. So I don't want you to think that, yeah, this is Brother Eric's thing and I better not mess it up. And He'll get mad at me and, and I'll get mad at him. And uh, no, nah, it, it ain't like that. This is democracy. But uh, Sister Jan, you just got in at the end of the meeting. We discussed a lot of things. Uh, so there is a recording for you to, to see what we did. But is there anything that you wanted to bring to the meeting? Any, any uh, tasks, anything that we need to work on? Anything, go ahead. Uh, no, and Willette's with me also, uh, Eric. Uh, no, you know, one thing I, uh, about our safety, Eric, um, should we have panic buttons, all employees? You know, I know that the, the transit system has those emergency, but you can't always get to them. I, like at my station, it's all the way down at the other end. And if you're in a situation with a, uh, you having a 1086 with another customer and you down at the other end, that's really not going to help you. And you're not on, you're on the platform by yourself. Shouldn't we have maybe panic buttons? What's going on your radio? Yeah. No, uh, no. You say you're not even working. You just in your uniform, going to work, whatever you on the platform and you, you encounter a situation. Yeah. I, sounds like. And, uh, Sounds good to me. Uh, and I know Willette mentioned that the radio has that button, but you know, if you don't have a radio and it doesn't, or it doesn't work or, you know, you're on your way to work in uniform, right? Right. Yeah. So you think this is a, 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 a contractual thing or? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's a contract, just like they give us, they issue out 
all the other stuff, why can't you issue out us a, a panic button that if I'm riding on the train, I see something uh, and I, like I, I haven't started that I could press the panic button. I, I understand that, again, you got those, but sometimes in no situation, you don't want to always uh, alarm. alarm people or bring attention. So uh, if you had, a, a, employees had a panic button, I just, uh, just a thought. You know, the bus, uh, bus operators have a little little thing, uh, uh, but I, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> But I don't know if it's really a panic button. I think it's called an event. Well, but, you can call it what you want to call it. I just came up with yeah. I just, yeah. No, no, no. I think it's better. I think what you're talking about, I don't even know if the bus people really have it. We don't have our bus operators on online right now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so thank you. Okay. So we put that as a, as a, as a, uh, in the contract proposal spreadsheet then. Okay. Okay. All right. Work on details of it if you want, and we can we can really flesh it out. What was okay. there? Any, I was going to ask you all any progress on the um, uh, in person meeting. Uh, not really, but we're going to work on that today. Yeah, we've been working. On we've that. been working on it, but okay. not. Okay. We're going to pin it down today. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The sooner you know, the sooner the better. Then we can promote it. You know. And I just wanted to remind you all that on uh, on, on on Tuesday at 11 a.m. we're going to be back at Chicago Avenue Garage because one of our organizers, Eric Struck, is being fired there, and we're having a protest for unjustly fired CTA workers. So uh, mm -hmm. spread the word to coworkers that are being punished or fired unjustly. We're, we're all assembling to speak up. What day is? It's Tuesday. 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 I thought it was Wednesday. Sorry. Wednesday. <laughs> oh. September 29th. Till ne till next time. You know, we oh. picking this week. Yeah, we picking this week. So mm. yeah. yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's all last minute. It's all last okay. minute. All and right. Then, and then on October 5th, which is a Tuesday, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I know that. We're having a protest at the local 241 office uh, demanding that our union presidents not cancel our, our union meetings. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, President Hill canceled membership meetings for 241 and then Eric Dixon threatened to do it for 308. So uh, look out for that. Well, let, did you have anything you want to share with with we are recording, of course, this this. Uh, meeting uh is there anything you wanted to share anything you wanted to bring up no not at this time thank you so much all right well, Sorry, that's it. We, missed it. we thought i thought it started we, we thought, thought it started, started at 12. Did, yeah we uh unfortunately i had to change it because i have to leave like now <laughs> okay no problem okay. Oh, um, oh, eric yes what time do you have to be at work on sundays no, no, this wasn't for work. This was my my wife uh, arranged a, an outing. Right, but you know what? We need to know that because the um, the in person is going to be on a Sunday. We need to know if you have to work. Somebody told me you had to work. No, no, I only do that. I only work on Sundays for the Sunday before the union meeting. So I switch my off days, you know, and then I work on Sunday so that I can go to the union meeting. Okay, wait a minute. October 10th is when we're supposed to have the meeting. Am I right? I thought it was the ninth. Because Let's we got to think about, make sure that's not the Tuesday before the union meeting, Eric. Because that yeah. means you have to go to work. Yeah, you're right. Let's see. So, so let's see. The second Tuesday of the month would be the union meeting. Right. Um, and so I'm looking on my that's calendar. The first is the fifth. The first Tuesday is the fifth, and the second one is the twelfth. So that means that Sunday on the, on the we supposed to meet on that Saturday, that Sunday. That Sunday. That Sunday would be the, the ninth. Uh, ninth. So that's the Sunday before you would have to go to the union meeting. Uh, the, no, the tenth. Sunday, yeah, the 10th, October tenth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's the tenth because that's the twelfth. Still, it would be the second Sunday. So that way you would have to go to work. What time do you have to be at work? Or do we push it back the next Sunday? Uh, hang on. 
So, so the first Tuesday, one, two, yeah, it's the 12th. You're right. Yes, it is. So could, could we do the 17th? Yeah. Yes, we could do that. That's what, that was my only question. I'm glad I thought about that. <laughs> glad because you did too. Somebody said you had to work on Sunday. So this way it won't interfere. That right. That's right. You can change now. So we're going to, that will be the 17th. Okay. Okay. Though. You saved us. I'm sorry for the mix up and the time in the meeting. I And I, I never receive it, Eric. I never do. You know, you know, I send email and text to you. I, I don't both. know why. If Jan doesn't get it, I don't I won't get it. If Jan gets it, I get it then. And I get it from her because it'd be under her name and I look it up and then you know I get it. I don't know what the problem is. I thought you just didn't want me in there, you know. I thought you were being a uh it wasn't democracy anymore. You out of order. <laughs> Thought, you yeah. out of order. <laughs> that was gonna be my next. <laughs> that's gonna be my next statement to you. <laughs> you can leave. Why don't you go spend some time with your family? I don't have time for this. I went back and forth with you. <laughs> You're a mess. Out of order. Out of order. It, you know what? That's their favorite phrase. They know nothing else. You know. Don't blame them. They yeah, can't they help know. themselves. They can't help themselves. No, they can't so, help themselves. So, so we'll let try to try to like check your spam folders or something because you get everything. You get and everything. I'm missing, I get everything, but I'm missing everything. Because I'm gonna show you the man. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah, okay, sweetie, but 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 that's good. I'm good because I'm like, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry for all the problems. I. I I also post the event on Facebook in our Facebook group, the Justice Coalition group. Maybe, maybe you can just try to keep up with the group. I don't know. Maybe you have your settings different. You know, like you're not getting notifications. And that's terrible. I'm gonna check. I, you know what? Maybe you all should put ten thousand dollars together and get me a phone. Yeah, let's make a motion for it. Okay, you community. out of order. Okay, go home. Uh, go go to work, Eric. Do what you got to do. Take that. I can't win. That's it. It's over. I'm stopping this. <laughs> take care, sweetie. See y'all later. All right. Bye. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Sorry we missed Thanks. you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye now. We'll just listen to it later. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mayfield, not the street, but the next street, then you're going to go down that way.